Okay, so at this point, if uh, you're happy with the model and how it looks, um, you can go from there, especially if you're going to attach it to the layout. Um, but if you want to add, like I said, some extra rigidity and bring it up to the level of the track, make it look uh, a little more realistic, um, we can go to part two where we use the cardboard or the uh, foam core. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to take my building here and take my foam core. Like I said, this looks like it's just about the right size sheet. Put it right there. Then we're going to lay that, line the edge up uh, as carefully as possible here with the edges. Looks like it's just over, which will be perfect. And then we're going to take our pencil and then uh, just go ahead and very carefully trace along the edges. Okay. Uh, if you're going to mount this to a base, uh, not only can you uh, keep these scissors here, especially if you're going to make it out of cardboard, but if you're going to use the foam core, uh, then it uh, may be better to get uh, a small hobby knife and uh, maybe a, a nice cutting okay. surface. Uh, I have this traced out. Now, you certainly don't need to cut this out uh, if you don't want. If you're just happy with a nice rectangular base, um, you can certainly keep it this way and use these as, say, parking areas for uh, for other detail. Um, maybe uh, put some other cars or what have you there. Especially if you're going to paint it over with a matching color and it uh, can blend into your scenery. Um, use it as a utility area, uh, another pit area to put equipment or what have you. Uh, I'm going to cut this out just so I can show you. Um, it, additionally, if you purchase extra buildings, these will actually all fit together and I'll throw in a picture there. Uh, as you can see they all uh, blend together, uh, join at the sides and form a long pit row kind of like at Le Mans, uh, but they do it seems in the picture fold this piece under and there is a I don't know if you can see there, there is a little bit of a, a perforation there so that's kind of meant to fold. Uh, what I would do is just mount it to this base and then if you do go to join two buildings or more together is just go ahead and cut this section off so that you can then join the next one up. If you change your mind later, if it's mounted to this piece, obviously if it's just the paper you'd have to tape it back together, but uh, if it's mounted to this board you can always glue the piece back on. Okay, so we get the base cut out. Uh, the trick is to just go, you know, really slow and uh, as even as possible. It does help to use maybe uh, some sort of a straight edge uh, if you're using a hobby knife. It's better to score it lightly, go over it several times. Once you get the initial cut, it's now, easier. My only follow. concern is, uh, since I'm just using a junk piece of uh, uh, foam core that I had there, uh, as far as trying to get the height just right, even with the paper and the foam core, we're at about mm, point, uh, point 0.21 and we want it to point 0.25 to get a quarter inch. So what I think I'm going to do is just go ahead and use the same tracing method and I've got some very thin cardboard. Okay, so what we have here is I just laid the piece down on top of this cardboard and uh, basically cut out, once again traced it with the pencil and uh, got the shape and just kind of got a bottom liner and then in the corner piece I just had a piece lined it up same way with the same line. Okay so what I have here is the uh, Woodland Scenics Hobby uh, tack. Now you can also use just white glue or Elmer's or whatever whatever you want whatever you have that'll work. So like I said the key is going to be to lay this down and then set it so that this edge is as flush as possible. Everything else uh, the back and the sides is just for uh, cosmetics. You want that to look as neat and clean as possible. So what I'm going to do is open this Okay, up. just a warning, this stuff, uh, this hobby tack, if you get it on your fingers, it can be uh, quite sticky. So as it sits, and like I said, it depends on what the temperature and humidity is, but uh, it will start to uh, turn clear and become very sticky and tacky. Um, so we're going to kind of use this as a glue here and I'm just going to very carefully, I made sure to get the corners and out on the edge, especially this front edge here because we want this lined up as perfectly as I said as possible 
and uh, you will get your fingers a little sticky here but I'm just going to go ahead and lay this over as carefully and evenly as I can here like I said okay, okay so oh. we've let this sit for a little while and you can see it's glued together quite nicely and uh, I believe we are right up to that this quarter way. inch before we actually put the building on top of it and we're going to glue it just the same um, this is the part where I said uh, you want to color in obviously this surface will be covered but we'll use some paint I've got some gray paint here like I said you can also just color this in uh, might be a little labor intensive but you could color it in with a, a black magic marker of some sort and make it look like asphalt um, also at this point um, before you glue this building down if you're not happy with anything on your building uh, the double-sided tape is pretty strong but if you need to now I wasn't happy with uh, how these lines ended up here they weren't aligned so what I did was I very carefully took the hobby knife I inserted it in between in the joint between the two pieces and I just kind of cut or broke the double-sided tape loose enough that I could move it because I was getting a bowing down here on this area so I loosened it up just enough uh, just be very careful because it's very easy to accidentally go through the cardboard uh, once again just keep some nice white glue available uh, to fix anything and do any reinforcement I'll probably put a little bit right here but at least it's a little better lined up and I'm not getting bowing so um, this is your chance to fix that before we mount it because it's going to be a little harder to work with once it's on there and it's secure so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shake this paint up and we're just gonna paint the edge here I got a paintbrush if you don't it's an old trick you can just use a section of uh, cardboard maybe about that big and you can just use it to spread the paint on if you need to so let's go get a brush and uh, get this all okay so I have just the sheet of paper it's kind of a drop cloth you can see I used it for my model railroad paint some green so what we're gonna do is just gonna very carefully take this and I've used this brush for a lot of different stuff just when you're done with it make sure to run it under the sink very uh, very thoroughly scrub out all the paint that's in it so I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint on there and what I'm gonna do is it doesn't matter if it goes over on the top or the bottom just be careful not to get it on your fingers we're just gonna kinda try to fill that edging now I, I did do a little bit of trimming here some extra pieces um, you can certainly take a piece of uh, piece of sandpaper or something and clean that up if uh, you want it super extra neat um, you could even use, say, some uh, some fiberboard, some wood to do this if you had the tools to do it. It's just, to me, it's cheaper and easier uh, to do this with uh, cardboard or this foam core. So, okay, so you can see here I've kind of gotten this all the way around, and most importantly, some of it's gone over the top. It's not a big deal. Um, I just take a little bit here and scrape it because you don't want you want to keep that nice nice and level so just kind of use a piece of cardboard scrape it make sure it doesn't dry in any sort of clump and what I think I'm going to actually do is turn it over and paint this just so it looks neat and clean okay on the so we've got that done uh, there might be a couple spots here um, managed to get this done without getting too much paint on my hands but uh, there's a, a couple streak marks in it this paints kind of meant for texturing uh, but this is the bottom. I just kind of want to make it dark look a, a little bit better. Uh, there might be a couple spots on the side that I didn't quite get. You can always do two coats. And then the trick to make it neat is to just do the strokes in one specific direction. So I don't know that you can see that maybe in the reflection. Um, it's not a big deal. I can go over it twice if need to. Uh, the bottom isn't a big deal. I'm just more concerned about this edge here. So we're going to set that down. We're going to let it dry see how it comes out okay so we've got it and uh, I painted a little bit in on the borders in case any shows through and then you can see it's not too bad on the back here nice and dark and in fact the slate gray fits in either uh, with the uh, gray of the cement or uh, black asphalt pretty good so we've got that and then as you can see we just put this right over the top of it it fits 
pretty snugly. So what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, use the same hobby tack and then apply okay, it. Okay, so I've got this thing uh, coated pretty well uh, with the uh, hobby tack. Uh, the one advantage over uh, white glue being that uh, it just stays tacky. So if you ever really wanted to remove this, unlike the white glue, you could peel it off. It'd probably be quite a bit of work, but you could peel it off in one piece and it wouldn't be completely destroyed versus, you know, some white glue, PVA glue, Elmer's, whatever you want to call it. It would be on there and you'd have to tear it to get it apart. So if for any reason you want to take this off and put it on like directly on a layout or something, you can do that. So anyway, I want to mount it on this piece. So uh, I am going to line it up uh, with this edge as best as I possibly can here. And then we're just going to kind of roll it on. it on. It will move just a little bit. It is very sticky. As it's drying, it's getting more sticky. So, kind of center that as best as possible. I'm going to lightly set it down. And then just kind of use my thumbs. Try not to get them too sticky. And just kind of push in. This front edge being the most important part here. So, that's pretty good. Pretty well lined up. I'm happy with that. Looks like it'll line up well with the track. More or less lined up in the back here. You can kind of see a little bit of the white of the glue. Uh, same thing here. Maybe a little there. Uh, so, I think that's just the hobby tack and it will dry clear. If not, you know, you can always very carefully go over it. So, I'm happy with that alignment. I don't want to touch too much of this. I got a little bit of stickiness on my fingers. I don't want to ruin the graphics here, but that's looking pretty good, and it's feeling pretty good around the corners. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of use the back of my hand here and just press it down with a gentle pressure, a little bit in the garages here, a little bit. Move this stuff out of the way. And you can get something heavy and kind of put it on top if you want. Well, that dries. Uh, I'm not so concerned about the back as I am the front. Uh, I measured it again and it comes out perfectly to a quarter inch. So I think we're, we're right on for lining up with the track. So, I've got that down pretty good. Feels like I got it sticky. Whatever touches is going to stick pretty well. So, I think we're good. That's lined up. So, Got that lined up. It's looking really nice. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. Maybe just put a little pressure. Maybe get something. A little bit of weight. Put it on the top. Okay. So we've let this sit for about an hour. An episode of Top Gear. And uh, put a little bit of weight on it. So let's see how it came out here. Just a little bit to keep it. Uh, a little bit of weight to keep it stuck down. So it's not looking too bad. Looks like it's one solid piece, so now we can take it, put it on the table, and see how it uh, okay, works Okay, so here it goes. We've got our track set up, and uh, lines up, and uh, seems to fit in pretty snugly, so not nice too bad. One. This uh, is the second part uh, where we uh, put a base on the building. You certainly don't need to. Uh, if you want to uh, do a full uh, layout and you have your track uh, sunk into the layout, uh, certainly you don't need to put a base on it. You can just put it on the uh, display. But uh, if you're like me and you want to keep the track out so you can uh, do different, uh, different layouts uh, and uh, have it up, you know, at a quarter inch height, put it on a nice base, and uh, it seems to fit in, as you can see, very nicely. Um, and it's very rigid. It doesn't move around, even when the cars are going by, you know. And it's a nice building. It doesn't have a cheap cardboard look to it. So uh, that is uh, the photorealistic pit building from AFX. Check it out.